Okay, so here's the video of me showing you how to actually make one of these speed boosters that I have created, okay? So this is everything you're gonna need. Everything will be linked down below and not holding any of the info back. The SDL file will be down there, free to download for you and do whatever you want with it. You can resell them, whatever you want. Okay, I, I wanted to add that you can um, use this. You can use this speed booster even on mirrorless cameras. So for example, here I have the Lumix G9 and obviously I have a uh, M Micro Four Thirds to EF mount and I pop this guy in here like I would any EF mount lens. And now instead of giving me an 80 millimeter, this is a 56, 65 millimeter on the Micro Four Thirds camera. And so you get tons more light again and you get a wider field of view. So it can be used if you have a Sony and you have an adapter, like a dummy adapter like this for EF to Sony or EF to Nikon C or EF to Canon R, you can pop this guy in and, and get the same results. So for example, you have a full frame Canon R you can pop this guy in and turn your full frame into a medium format camera. Okay, so this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need this glue. This is the glue I use. You're gonna need one of these, a caliper, which if you already 3D print, you probably already have one of these. So you need a caliper or some sort of a tool that can open up a lens, okay? You're gonna need the 3D printed part, which again, the link down below, and you're gonna need one of these. Um, this is an EF to M to micro four thirds adapter and you don't necessarily need this, but you do need this. If you only have an APS-C camera, you don't need this if you have a full frame camera. And the reason is because on the APS-C cameras, they come with a flash and you know, they have this pop-up flash. And so the, the part with this, where the screws go, they will hit that flash and they won't allow you to actually turn uh, the 3D printed part. And so if, if, if you only have an APS-C camera, you need an adapter. Okay, this adapter, I forgot how much it was, 20 bucks or something. Uh, the 3D print, the glue, the tool to open it. And you're gonna need this, okay? This is a 40.5 millimeter macro lens. And this is a plus eight, okay? And I'm gonna link down below what I'm gonna link is uh, a set that comes with four of these. And the reason why is because I think it's a better bang for your buck. You Not only do you get you know the, the one that you need, but you get extra ones that we are gonna use later on to make a camera lens, about a 80 millimeter F1.8 lens, okay? So keep those other ones if you buy the whole set and then I'll show you how to make a lens out of them. The reason why we need, it has to be 40.55 millimeters. And that's the perfect, that's gonna be the, the perfect size to cover the whole sensor and let us be able to get in there to have enough space in the flange distance and all that. And it's very simple. So let me just show you, okay? You need this guy. I just, you, you know, he's got two pokey things out here. There's like little grooves in there. You stick it in there and you have to be really careful because you wanna make sure that you are not going to scratch that lens, obviously, because that's the important part. And then you, you twist, you twist and it'll come out. It'll start screwing. Once it starts screwing, it just comes straight out. You can just keep doing it with your finger and it'll come straight out. Okay. You could toss this part, but you have to keep this part. There's two sides to this lens. There's a flat side and then a round side and you wanna do flat side down. Okay, so this is an M43 to EF adapter. And these, this is a Fotasi brand one. These are like 10 bucks, they're very cheap. Very, and, and it's nice because it gives you weight and it's made out of alumina and it just adds a nice, a nice overall finish to the product. Okay, so you put this, remember, with the flat side down. You take this guy that you saved from unscrewing it and this guy also has two sides. It's got a flat side and then it's got a little round side. And this one you want to do round side down. And just wiggle it in there so it's in the middle. Okay. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to take your 3D print 
You're going to put it on top of there. You're going to squeeze it down. And you're going to hear a crack. Ka, ka, ka. It's going to go in there. And then you're just going to turn it. You're going to turn, 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 turn. And I like to leave it about here where... I don't know. Let's see if you can see this a little better here. I like to leave it where that dot is right there from that from that screw. Why? See, make sure you get your get you get to see that. Okay. Why? That's because then you're guaranteed to be able to fit in an APS-C camera because you need room for that screw to be able to pop in for that. For the lens to be able to pop into place and for that screw not to hit the flash. We have some threads and this are, these are 3 8 2 quarter inch. These are made out of aluminum, these little threads in here. And in the 3D print, they are threaded. And so all you do is you put it on there. You take a 10 cents. You make sure you're putting pressure up to the inside only. And you start turning it with that 10 cents. And that is the easiest way to get it in there without breaking it, without breaking this little aluminum piece. And then you just do it on each side and that's it. You're basically done. That's all it takes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One more thing. So before you pop this guy in there, obviously, you're going to want to put some glue in. So then, you know, it's obviously, it, it stays together very well. And sometimes you'll see, I don't know if you can see there, sometimes you get, you'll get about a millimeter on one side where it won't stick where where you'll get like a millimeter of separation and i haven't found anything wrong with that i don't think it affects the focus and it'll fo it focuses to infinity and there you go that's it these are your regular tripod screws and they just hold the lens in with friction so they squeeze the lens in oh one more thing okay so this part of the 3D print here is very hard to do since this prints down like this. So all the inside has supports. And so what I did was I went in the slicer. I use a Creality 3. 3v3, not the old school 3s, you know, those ones we all started on, but the newer ones. And I put print, make overhangs printable. And I put a value at 74 point nine four seven four point nine four and it gives you this gradual increase and all you got to watch out for it is that you don't cover that screw hole and you're good that gives you that screw if you don't cover that screw hole you go all the way before that screw hole begins you'll have enough clearance for the lens because the lens goes into the mount so when it zooms it goes all the way inside like that beyond the mount and so you need a little bit of space to be able to allow that to go all the way in so that's why I did that and uh, if you do the uh, print overheads then the the support will just pop off and it won't leave any scarring and it'll just stay on the bed when you pull this guy out. So yeah, there you go. That's it. Very simple. Okay, this the Bronica, this is a Bronica SQ lens. This is the 80 millimeter F2.8. And this is really this is a cool lens because it's so small for what it is. You know, this is a medium format lens, and medium format lenses tend to be super huge. But you know, compare this to a cheap zoom lens an ef mount cheap zoom lens and it's relatively small and compact but bronica sq is the only mount type that this works with right now and that is because bronica sq is the biggest medium format camera before you get into cameras that don't have internal focusing mechanisms so this is the biggest camera before you get to a focusing system that is like an accordion. This is the only, this is the biggest format where you still have an internal focusing mechanism within the lens itself. And the aperture on this lens works by pressing down this button. 
so you can expose with the full app with the aperture wide open then you press that little button and it'll close to the aperture that you want and so the reason we need the biggest uh, medium format is because of the flange distance so the obviously the bigger the the medium format the more flange distance there will be between the lens and the sensor or in this case film obviously because this is from a film camera and so that is what allows us to be able to make a speed booster and adapter so yeah let me know if you have any other questions remember this is a plus eight 40 millimeter macro lens and that's what i'm using that's what works what's going to work on these for these sort of speed boosters diy speed boosters so if you want to make a diy speed booster this is the best thing i found to use to make one is a macro lens and so yeah go out there try to make your own tag me you know let me know if you make make one of these or you use this knowledge to make something i want to see what you guys make and yeah, I hope, I hope you like this. Hope this blesses you. And I'm also going to make one for, I'm going to make one for a Micro Four Thirds camera and turn the Micro Four Thirds camera into a full frame camera. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Watch all my other videos. Thank you so much.